Hi everyone, this is Ron from pocculture.com. I'm here with JB Tadena, who you may have heard in Raya and the Last Dragon from Call of Duty Vanguard. He's been in Westworld, CSI, Y50, and SEAL Team. And he joins the cast of Kung Fu on the CW for season two as Sebastian. JB, how are you? I'm doing very well. Thank you for having me, Ron. Oh man, I'm so excited to be able to connect with you. While you're currently still up in Vancouver filming, for season two, about to wrap. How's that experience been treating you so far? Oh man, it's been a dream. Like what you think about like the dream job where you get a, you know, a multi-dimensional character, you go to work with a bunch of people who are passionate about the job, but also respect each other. Everyone just is overall just wonderful on this set. And it's been a dream, like I said. That's great to hear. I mean, it really does seem like a really cool team. We, I follow all of you on Instagram, social media. So it's cool to see the behind the scenes shots, some of the candid shots. Um, what's been kind of the most fun experience with the group off camera so far? That off you can camera. share. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, huh, I can share. Well, like early on, um, we all went like laser tagging a bunch. And it was just kind of, it, it's been years since I've done that. So just going back with these people who are bit like, they're all kids at heart, man. And it was just getting to know everyone that way in such a fun environment, which laser tag in Vancouver is, is awesome. <laughs> everyone should check it out. But uh, laser tagging with the group, just, you know, uh, going out to, to eat, just hanging out at each other's places has been really fun. Now, it's kind of a bummer since this production has been kind of in the middle of the pandemic. Um, I know you all started in the fall and it's been on and off a little bit here and there. How challenging has that been to be, like you said, on this dream project, but having to navigate COVID? Uh, well, I think it's like the same for every project, right? Uh, uh, everyone's good. It, it's almost inevitable at times that, that you're gonna run into a, a problem here or there. And it's no one's fault. Everyone on our set has been, you know, practice protocols very safely. Um, and we actually are one of the few productions that have kept going. And, you know, our, our, uh, our cases have been small and contained. And when, when that's happened, they, done a really superb job of rescheduling things and kind of just tetrising each each scene to, to shoot on different days and they've done really well with that so it's been a challenge yeah and, and some people like their schedules would have to be rearranged and everything but um we've gotten through it and and pretty successfully that's great you play sebastian who is a chef in, in Kung Fu. And ironically, despite the fact that you're Asian, <laughs> um, they're not asking you, at least so far as, as, that I've seen, to do any martial arts, to do any Kung Fu. In well, a show called well Kung Fu. let's hold that thought for a little bit. But uh, yeah, no, I, I, he plays a chef. Uh, oh, I play a chef. And luckily enough, they um, props to WB for giving me some knife lessons <laughs> because you know i cook i can cook i'm not a cook but they gave me some nice skills our uh, our onset chef uh gary has been really awesome and he's just kind of showing me what it's like to, to command a, ki a kitchen the way uh you know a hot shot would oh that's awesome i, I i'm fascinated by this idea so to, just for those who are watching, I've only had the opportunity to watch the first two episodes of the of season two so far. So like you said, there's more to come, which is awesome. Um, tell us a little bit more about the behind the scenes in terms of the preparation and training that you had to do for this role. Sure. Uh, well, like I said, I, I got some, uh, some nice skill training. Um, as far as the character, uh, there's a lot to be said. Um, and without spoiling anything, it's just say he goes on a really, really fun journey this season where you get to see just multiple levels of this, you know, grounded character. And 
mentally it was tough to prepare because anyone with kind of a past, let's just say, to, to kind of live in that is always, it's always hard, but, you know, it's just been doing that work plus uh, the wonderful stunt team Kung Fu has and getting to do some of that stuff as well as um, the cooking and sharing time with with Kang, who's just a wonderful scene partner, and 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 JP John Presida, uh, it's uh, let's. I, well, I'm just really proud of the work. Yeah, that's great, and I think what you've already said a couple of times in this conversation, which really stands out to me, is that you you feel like it's a genuinely layered character, not just a you know one dimensional stereotype or anything like that. Um, how important was it for you to be able to play a role like this on a show, again, that is based on martial arts, but isn't the basis of your character? Oh, man. It, I've been waiting a long time <laughs> to play a character with, with multiple levels. And it, it, it's mostly speaking to the opportunities that are given to, you know, uh, actors of color. And to, to finally get a chance to to sink my teeth into something where I, I don't need to have like an accent and I don't need to necessarily know martial arts for this character uh, and still have a well-rounded, deep uh, character to, to play with. It's, it's really meant a lot to me to be given that opportunity. And that extends kind of to the whole show, right? Kung Fu itself, for those who know the history, has a problematic history. And this series has been great because it's redeemed that in many ways. Um, do you get the sense being part of the team that everybody carries with them that responsibility and, and knowledge of how important it is to redeem this franchise and just kind of martial arts shows in general? Yeah, I think uh, throughout season one, the fact that we got a season two is, it speaks to that already. Um, but they definitely shouldered the load for that on that first season on making the necessary changes and adjustments to to get out of that shadow and to to be their own show and to kind of take back the narrative. And I think they successfully did that in season one. And in season two, it, like again, the dream is just for our, our characters to be without any of the stereotypes holding our characters hostage you know what i mean so it, it's kind of like now they get just get to live in this storyline without it having to be specifically asian yeah for sure for you obviously we know each other a little bit and what i've always appreciated is that you're a vocal proponent of representation in general but specifically for southeast asian representation for filipino representation um, why do you think it is that, you know, Southeast Asians are so underrated and underrepresented in media? I think it's just a systemic thing that's, you know, uh, when you look at the public's perception of what Asian is, it's usually Eastern. And I think that it will help uh, the public uh, perception of Southeast Asians if they've seen more of us in like more roles because like what we what have we talked about the uh, Indian and Pakistani and South Asian and Southeast Asian population in the United States is like 40 percent of the whole Asian American population so they're all around us and I, I think it, it, it's just been the, the past perception of what Asians are like on TV and the fact that these are the only ones people are familiar with that, that Hollywood's shown them. Yeah, and I, I would like to think over the last at least couple of years that's starting to change and, I, and I've appreciated like the Southeast Asian community being more vocal about being the invisible Asians and things like that. Yeah, absolutely. The steps are being that. taken. Uh, I've definitely seen more opportunities out there for Southeast Asians. They're being more specific on breakdowns. Um, the collaboration process on Kung Fu has been incredible. They, 
Uh, our showrunners, Bob Behrens and Christina Kim, spoke with me directly about the character and like what we could add, you know, to to bump up my Filipino heritage, to 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 make it like obvious. And there's another uh, actress on the show, Marisa Cuevas, who's a uh, Filipina, and they she gets to uh, speak a little Tagalog on the show as well. And it, it's kind of cool that they're really leaning into. Filipino representation on Kung Fu as well, which started off as a strictly, you know, Chinese show. So that's props awesome. to them for that. Yeah. Yeah. And I think even that's just that next step that has been missing for so many years. It's such a simple step, right? You, A, obviously cast and have uh, Southeast Asian representation in front of the camera, behind the camera, and then actually use them, like ask them <laughs> how to <laughs> right. improve authenticity. Um, but for some reason, that's just been ignored. They just throw yeah, it all so out like, there. So what can we do? Oh, you want to talk <laughs> about it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> let's talk about it. And in general, how collaborative is the process on Kung Fu in terms of with the writers, directors, showrunner and all oh, of that? It's, it's really open. Um, and no one, there's really no ego, which is really great. Um, so if I wanted to, if, you know, this doesn't feel right, like, what do you think about this? And like, I think this should happen at this time instead of this time. And everyone kind of makes it work so that the whole thing uh, makes sense. That's great. And I feel like there's a strong push for more sets like that. And I hope we get more of that going forward. Um, yeah, I'm spoiled gonna... now, man. <laughs> well, hopefully you can bring more of that to the project <laughs> that, you know, that you're going to work on. Um, it, wh what is a dream role for you? Is it, uh, Obviously, this is the dream Space role. Cowboy. What's the next? Space Cowboy. <laughs> <laughs> Tell like me more. Kind of, well, I mean, everyone wanted to be Han Solo, right? When they were a kid. That's just the dream. The, the, uh, and honestly, I get to play a little of this as, as Sebastian. So, like, there's, there's bits and pieces of it, but to have it happen in space, be the the roguish outlaw who who just you know it, it does everything selfishly, but down when it comes down to it, will do the right thing. And it's just that character's just always oh, so cool, and it's just a dream of mine to play something like that. I love it. You were obviously ready. You've thought this. Out. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> always ready. Space cowboy. Space cowboy. And we need that. Like, we, it's so funny because there's been that a lot of talk online lately with the Lord of the Rings show coming about things like fantasy and sci-fi and how absurd it is that fans can't stretch their minds. Not just fans, <laughs> yeah. creators can't stretch their minds to have like Asians in space and you know right. black and brown people well, like, in fantasy. Fantasy, like I get what they're trying to like say about that, and which is it's still fictional, so let's put that aside but space and like anything in the future or post-apocalyptic that's not even now we're looking towards the future where everyone's going to be all sorts of which what ethnicity you know what i mean it's it it makes no sense to not have all types right in a futuristic and setting especially what i love lately is with space you have a lot more um, stories where China is a big role in that. We just had, you know, a, a big show related to that, uh, yes. a big film related to that that came out. And yet you still have w in the core cast, you know, no Asians, no no Chinese, no South Asians, no, nothing. It's just, it's a, it's a strange um, trend, but I guess right. not that strange. No, it's not strange. <laughs> but like we said, baby steps, we're, we're making them. I believe we are making them. So, um, Obviously, no spoilers for your character, Sebastian. Um, but, and I don't know the answer to this. Assuming Sebastian does not die, <laughs> if you could just write it again, don't no spoilers. But what kind of character would you love to see Sebastian continue to evolve to be, uh, and what would you like to add more to his character? Um, it's like Sebastian is just super laid back, and. I think I would love to see him evolve into a place where he takes more like a leadership role or has to is forced to to do something that's like beyond his his ceiling or, or his comfort zone. And I think once that happens, we can see him go in any which direction. That's great. 
All right. I got two questions before I get you out of here. One, where can we find the best Filipino food in Los Angeles? Ooh, Tatang Noho is is my favorite place to go. They moved out of North Hollywood, so they're kind of finding a new spot, but you can still order for them. Tatang, they're, they have the best sisi in town, yeah. All right, well, we got to check that out, and they owe you a little bit of food, free food for that promotion. <laughs> for that plug. <laughs> the, the last question I got for you, I know you're you know uh, a geek yourself and big into pop culture. We've talked about this. Um, the use of Tagalog on Kung Fu this season, which is awesome. And the huge pop culture moment we had was the use of Tagalog with no subtitles in Spider-Man No Way Home. How big was that for you? Um, and how you know how important do you think generally for Southeast Asian representation, Filipino representation? Yo, I that I was speechless when that happened. Like this moment that you know is one of the most anticipated moments in history. Like the 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 three live action spot or the two live action Spider Man from previous iterations showing up in the new Spider Man in a Filipino household where they're speaking Tagalog with no subtitles and the cool part about it is no one made a fuss about it. It's like yes, you know you have Filipino friends and you know what they're like what this is and you know this culture so it just felt so good to see it and see it in such a big film and see it where everybody felt normalized to it i love it it was a huge moment i think uh the theater i was in cheered and it was just fun to see everybody get to celebrate that um so i'd love to hear your thoughts on it jb i'm excited to see sebastian in season two of kung fu premieres Appreciate next week, you. March 9th on The CW. Um, can't wait to see you more, more of you going forward and uh, we'll connect again in the future. Thanks, man. Love you, dude.